Hi everyone, it's Martin Stadler here and I am a South African currently living in Mexico. Me and my twin brother both gave our lives to Jesus Christ at the age of 16 and our goal with this YouTube channel is to see souls being saved and to help you grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ. So if you want to be a part of this community, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Now, in this video, I want to share with you this really important question that me and my friend Pastor Emilia were asked during a Christian Q&A live stream. Watch this answer that we gave to this question. I see one right here by Senorio, Senorio Gold. They say, can you please help me? I need guidance and God is mad at me. I was sinning all last year and God is treating me bad. I was God's chosen one last year. I was nothing but a hypocrite. So they feel, Marnus, what I can take from it is they feel that they were God's chosen one, but they were failing God all last year. So now God is mad at them. They were God's chosen. That's what they're saying. They were God's chosen one, but they were failing him. And now God is mad at them. Uh, go ahead, Marnus. What would you have to say to somebody who says, man, I know that I'm chosen, but I was failing God and God's mad at me. What, what would you say to somebody like that, Marnus? Yeah, well, there's a very good answer to that in the Bible. And we see it with David. Like David fell short a lot of the times, but he was still God's chosen one. So Amen. don't think because you messed up, you're too far from God. That's the difference between worldly grief and godly grief. Amen. Godly grief produces repentance. And what does that do? It leads us closer to God. What you're going through is clearly worldly grief because he's pushing you away from God. He's making you feel like you're not even chosen anymore. And the second thing I want you to know is when David sinned and he uh, fornicated, like he had uh, he cheat or he had sex with um, Bathsheba. Bathsheba and he slept with her. God gave him a punishment because like a loving father, God sometimes does discipline. But at the end, it's for our best. So don't see the discipline of God as a bad thing, but see it as a good thing. It's pushing you closer to Christ. But here's one thing that's very important. Even though David did mess up, the Bible makes it clear that David was still a man after God's own heart. So here's what I want you to remember. It's not okay if you have fallen down, but it's if you get back up and walk this journey with God. That is the key thing that you have to remember. Because yes, as Christians, we will sin. We will fall short because none of us is perfect. But God will still look at you and say, you are a person after my heart. If you still keep pursuing him, if you don't let that worldly grief push you away from God, but rather if you use it as a godly grief that brings you closer to God, that brings you to repentance <clears throat> and you want and makes you want him to serve you more faithfully. Amen. That was a great answer. Great answer. That That's true. The devil is so quick to condemn you. Mm -hmm. I, I heard a pastor say this. The devil is the one that kick you in the leg. And then when you're walking around with the limp, he'll blame you for walking with the limp. You know, he's the one that offers the temptation. And then when we listen to the temptation, he's the one right there condemning them. He's the one right there pointing the finger. But I want to let you know that scripture says that nothing can separate you from the love of God. Now, that is not giving anyone a license to sin. Of course not. Of course not. But I believe with all my heart that you don't want to sin. You don't want to sin, but you fall in sin and you feel conviction. You feel like Marnus was saying, godly remorse. That's what you feel. But I want you to know that if you confess your sin, scripture tells us that he is faithful and just to forgive you and to wash you and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness if you confess your sins to him. And another thing, Marnus, something that I've been thinking about is, you know, people always ask the question, well, if God knows everything, then why do I need to, why do I need to pray? Why do I need to confess it? And the answer that I believe God gave me is this, you're right, God does know everything, but you don't know everything. You don't know about the goodness of God fully yet. You don't know about the forgiveness of God fully yet. You don't know about the love of God fully yet. You don't know about those things. So it's already there prepared for you. And it's not, you don't have to pray so that God can know about it. No, you have to pray so that you can learn to humble yourself and so that you can learn to receive the forgiveness of God, the love of God, the grace of God. So God already knows about it. But when you pray and you repent and you humble yourself, you're beginning to learn about God's goodness, about God's mercy and about God's grace. So yes, God already knows all your sins. But the reason that we have to pray and the reason that we have to confess them is so that we can learn how to humble ourselves to God and how to receive his mercy and how to receive his grace.